Welcome back everyone. Today we're going over the Nolly. For a Nolly, I would set up um, with my front foot snug in the pocket of the board. And I, I don't like to have my foot hanging off too much, but I, I really like to have it in that pocket just because it feels nice to to feel closer to the ground than to have it way on the tip and, and have to pop harder. And um, back foot, it, it can really vary. You can put it, put it in a lot of different places and you can have it closer to the bolts or the you know the center whichever feels more comfortable to you you're going to apply the same principles that you would for an ollie you know you're going to pop and as you pop you're going to start sliding the um the back foot um, backwards and and that's what feels a little uncomfortable since with a regular ollie of course you're you're going to be sliding it forwards in the direction that you're going and in this case it's it's going to feel you know like you might be going backwards a little and that's okay um, it's just a feeling that you have to get used to but you're gonna slide it backwards to really just level it out, and um, your first nollie might be slow, but and you know it might be might be low to the ground, but that's okay as long as you know you're starting to get it up off the ground. You really just want to continue that expansion of um, of you know of really lifting it up higher and leveling it out over time, and eventually you know you'll just get to the point where you can start nollying over stuff. So might not come for a while but uh, you just want to practice that motion over and over um, and like I said it feels it feels nice to really have the front foot closer to the the ground even if it's just a little bit it makes a world of difference that's that's a nollie basically I would, I would recommend trying it at, at a standstill as well if you if you want to feel more comfortable with it and work on rolling later um, but it's essentially the same principles as an ollie the only thing that makes it more difficult is that you're you know training your opposite feet. I like to think that um, that learning nolly and switch is really like learning how to write with your non-dominant hand or you're telling your left foot everything to do that your right foot normally would. And that's essentially a nolly for you. So, And I'll be honest, I don't go over too many nolly tricks or switch tricks because they tend to be, um, you know, they tend to have the same principles as regular tricks. So whether you're doing, you know, a, let's say a, a regular kickflip or regular tray flip, uh, when it comes to nollying and switch, a lot of what applies with the regular version of the trick is going to apply with nollie or switch. Now there's going to be a few, a few differences for sure, but um, when it comes to nollie switch fakie, um, you can really take the principles from a regular trick and apply it to those things. Now, as I said, you might be rolling in a different direction and it might feel weird. And the tips I think that are most important for these tricks are to, to really just keep that in mind. Like for instance, when you're doing a nollie, um, obviously you're going off the nose and you might be looking forward a lot. Uh, whereas I think it helps to really just keep your shoulders parallel as you would for a regular ollie or any other trick. And I think the the earlier that you can start learning nollie and switch, um, the better. Just because you you won't feel like you're so far behind as you as you get further into it. I would encourage people to start rolling around switch at the skate park as soon as they feel comfortable doing so. It, it's just it really helps you be more well versed and uh, it trains your opposite foot in doing things that you wouldn't normally do. So this type of practice will definitely help you out with that. And. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you want to see below as always, and I'll see you next time.